10.2 might be the last patch for Dragonflight, and it comes with some of the biggest changes ever for PvP. With an entirely new game mode, exclusive titles and gear, and major class reworks, there's a lot to cover. Today, we're going to keep things quick and simple and answer some of your most burning questions about the new Guardians of the Dream patch. But before we get into it, time is ticking to get your end of season rewards. Whether it's that 1800 Elite set or Gladiator, with skill caps rating gain guarantee, we got your back and promise to help you achieve your goals. With a growing library of hundreds of videos, you can master your class, learning hidden secrets that actually work. And with our Ask a Pro forum, you can get on-demand help from expert players, including Rank 1 Gladiators and even BlizzCon champions. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. All right, let's get back to the video. To kick things off, the new patch means a new season and a fresh start. Moving forward, we'll be in the new Verdant season, which is probably the friendliest name any season has ever been called. Unless your goal is to be terrifying to people who hate lush green grass. Anyway, Verdant Gladiator isn't the only new title coming in Season 3, as they are also adding a new healer-specific title called Battlemender for winning 50 rounds above 1800 rating in Solo Shuffle. That'll fix the queues for sure! As well as the titles, the new season will of course bring new transmog sets, which all seem to have the theme of having weird hats. We're yet to see what the Elite Tabard looks like, but expect more from the Verdant theme. There will also be a new weapon enchant named Verdant Crush, which fits with the glowing green energy theme of the Emerald Dream Patch. And of course, a new Slither Drake Gladiator mount, which will make your shuffle partners green with envy. The final cosmetic will be the new saddle mount of Vicious Moon Beast, where you can ride your own Boomkin into battle. Those nerfs really hit them hard, huh? Coming with the new season is also going to be an alteration to the competitive map pool adding Blackwork Hold and Ruins of Lordaeron to Pool A, Hookpoint and the Robodrome to Pool B, and Tolveron and Dalaran Sewers to Pool C. This change will mean that each week you will rotate through a pool of 10 maps out of the 15 available in the game, making it hopefully more balanced for every composition. To round things off for Verdant Season changes, the cooldown of Gladiator's Medallion is now 90 seconds for all healer specializations. That's right, the Trinket is now 1 minute and 30 seconds down from 2 minutes. This could potentially change Arena as we know it, with setup compositions struggling due to the enemy healer being able to break out of CC chains an entire set of diminishing returns earlier than before. Classes with large 90 second crowd controls like a Warrior's Intimidating Shout will also feel this change, as they can no longer fully fear the healer on its second use, making games potentially much longer than before, as healers will be able to have answers far more often. Honestly, this might be one of the biggest meta changes ever in PvP, and its ripple effects will be felt no matter what class you play. But we want to hear from you. Do you think this is a good change for PvP? Let us know in the comments below. While you're doing that, let's cover a new addition to the competitive scene, Solo Queue RBGs. Much like Solo Shuffle, this is going to be first introduced as a brawl called Battleground Blitz, and if successful, it could be implemented into the game as a permanent new rated mode. Unlike Solo Shuffle, you can actually duo queue for Battleground Blitz if one player is a healer. That's right, Goldshire Date Night just got a lot better. With only 8 players per team, the rule of each map are way different. For instance, Eye of the Storm now features only 2 bases at a time, which rotate after each flag capture. It's also going to be a lot easier to ninja cap bases on all control maps, as the time to cap is dropping from 6 seconds to 4, which means rogues and boomkins will likely be high value in this new game mode. If you're concerned about lengthy, uncoordinated Warsong Gulch games and Twin Peaks matches lasting 25 minutes, Blizzard has you covered. Flag maps are now capped at a 12 minute duration and the damage debuff on flag carriers will stack up 100% faster. But that's not the only thing speeding up. Your mounted speed has received a substantial boost and you'll have access to power-ups including a shield, stealth detection, cooldown recovery, and personal stealth. It's like playing Smash Brothers with all items on. Personally, I can't wait to get zerged by an invisible warrior. As for compositions, you'll be hard locked into having two healers, 5 to 6 DPS, and a tank depending on the map. Hopefully, Blizzard will implement some sort of rule where each team gets a balanced amount of stealth classes, though, as the amount of Boomkin and Rogue can hard carry is off the charts, but nothing is in so far. As far as tanks go, they are able to queue into any battleground. However, if there is no tank in your team, you won't be able to get capture the flag maps like Warsong Gulch or Twin Peaks. 
Ideally, Blizzard will allow you to queue for multiple roles in the future, as due to tank being such a niche picked role, the number of flag maps you're going to see will be pretty low if Blizzard bottlenecks you into only being one specialization. Moving swiftly on, let's talk gear. In Season 3, we're going to have pretty much the same crafting system as before. These include Verdant Tethers, which give you and your teammate a chance to gain versatility when you heal them. There's also a Verdant Conduit, which will simply give you a chance at extra secondary stats. Next up, Dream Tender's Charm, which will give you stacking critical strike chance above 70%, and Dreaming Devotion, a new enchant for healers that causes your helpful spells to proc a large heal on the targeted player. As for other embellishments and crafted items, many of them have undergone significant nerfs with notable examples like the 50% reduction in the effectiveness of Fang Adornments. These changes impact Outlaw Rogues and Fist Weavers the most, as these specs frequently ran this embellishment on both weapons. Blizzard is also pre-nerfing all the new crafted items they are introducing. However, do remember that Spore Cloak was also nerfed through Season 2 and still saw a lot of play. Because of this, we're thinking the new Plate Helmet Flourishing Dream Helm may be an item that is still viable for melee players, as it will generate a large shield effect for the player and their teammate. Another exciting addition for players is the new legendary for Death Knights, Paladins, and Warriors called Firalath the Dream Render. Little is known about the stats or effects of this legendary, but if Wrath of the Lich Kings is anything to go by, there might be some very frustrated caster players. There's a high chance its effect is very similar to a mechanic of the final boss, but this is pure speculation of course. As for set bonuses, these are still nerfed by 50% like all the other seasons, but there are some clear winners among the bunch whose effects are still very powerful. The first one being Arcane Mages, who are going to have increased spell damage all the time through consuming clear casting procs. They're also going to have way more consistent damage as every third clear casting consumed is going to buff missile damage by 75% and allow it to cleave. Destruction Warlocks are also receiving a great tier set that randomly gives them charges on Dimensional Rift through Immolate procs. If you've ever been blasted by three rifts at once, you know how powerful this will be. Finally, Outlaw Rogues are going to be super happy with their tier set. Their two set is going to give them an extra chance at their Sinister Strike hitting twice, and their four set is going to allow them to keep one of their current Roll the Bones buffs up when they refresh, meaning they're going to have the rolls they want up for much longer. And to wrap things up when it comes to gearing, if you're wanting to re-roll this season, Blizzard has made it even easier by allowing you to send honor by spending 2500 honor on your main in exchange for a 1500 honor bind on account token. Finally, we have some major class reworks for all rogue specs and Havoc Demon Hunters, which involve moving around their talent trees and introducing new abilities. It would take an entire video to break down all of the changes, but here are some highlights. In the rogue class tree, all rogues will be able to choose between gouge or a 1 minute AoE blind with a 40% reduced duration. This doesn't sound too great, but it may find its place in niche scenarios like peeling melee cleaves or shutting down a legion of demonology warlock pets. Rogues will also gain an additional charge of feint and a 30% increase in movement speed on their sprint, making them even harder to kill, especially since crippling poison will slow for even more. Also, if you remember that AoE kidney shot ability, the one that stunned everyone around the rogue, don't worry, that's been removed. As for Demon Hunters, they are receiving a significant buff to Darkness, giving it a 100% chance to avoid damage when in Arena. Demon Hunters will also have a Legion Decree move to the General Tree, perhaps allowing them to pick it up along with the Hunt in certain builds. Fodder to the Flame has been removed, and its effect is now triggered by the player using Spectral Sight. So although this may be a DPS buff in some scenarios, relying on RNG to break crowd control with a Lucky Fodder proc seems to be a thing of the past. Although not technically a rework, Devastation Evoker is also receiving a substantial change with its giant killer mastery being nerfed, while receiving a flat damage buff to compensate. This should hopefully reduce the class's reliance on gimmicky one-shots and enable it to perform more consistent damage outside of Dragon Rage windows. Again, there are a lot of class changes coming with the patch, so be sure to subscribe for future updates to all of our tier lists. And as a reminder, with a skill cap membership, you can ping pro players in our Ask a Pro forum. We also got hundreds of videos and arena commentaries where the same players teach you the skills needed to crush the competition and hit your rating goals. All this and more is why we guarantee improvement. As long as you use our website, we promise you will get better faster than you thought possible. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below for an exclusive discount offer. So that wraps up the major changes in patch 10.2. What are you most excited by? Do you like the new elite sets? What meta do you think is going to take over? Let us know in the comments. And as always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.